I'll bet you a legendary Shadowmorn that you'll be making a huge mistake farming gold in Phase 4. You're overlooking the incredible opportunity right below the shadowy spires of Ice Crown Citadel. But fear not, fellow adventurers, because today I'll teach you all my tips. I'm about to unveil the secrets that have been hiding in plain sight, and I'll guide you past the naysayers that think the only way to make 50,000 gold per week is to buy WoW tokens or run GDKPs. So are you ready to change your WoW gold farming game forever? Starting off with my fifth favorite method that you're most likely overlooking, we have the Battered Hilt Farming. Let's start with the basics. There are three new Frozen Halls dungeons near Ice Crown Citadel that you have to unlock in order. You start in Forge of Souls, then you move on to Pit of Sauron, and finally Halls of Reflection. These three dungeons drop 232 catch-up gear, but the real draw is the Battered Hilt. The Battered Hilt is a bind and equip quest item that has a debatably low drop rate. Some sources like Wowhead put the number at 1%, while other sources put the number closer to 0.8%. The Battered Hilt is extremely desirable because it starts the Queldalar questline. This quest chain gives you an achievement and a 251 item level weapon perfect for a fresh alt or even your main character. Early hilts, depending on your server, can go for over 15,000 gold each. The best way to farm the Battered Hilt will be to individually queue for the new dungeons using RDF. I plan to hit the three heroic lockouts per character on three alts per day for a total of nine lockouts per day. Alternatively, though, there are solo farming methods in Pit of Sauron if you want to guarantee an early hilt drop. Up next, my fourth and almost certainly forgotten gold maker is consumable farming. Everybody did forget about consumable farming in Phase 3 because prices were rock bottom. I'd counter, though, that ICC is the hardest raid in Wrath of the Lich King. For the first time in six months, consumable farming is back on the table as a legit gold maker. For example, in TOC, I could typically get away with only one food buff throughout the entire raid. Now in ICC, though, with multiple wipes on every boss, consumable usage and prices will skyrocket. That does mean fishing is back again, and Dragonfin Angelfish prices are pushing over 2.5 gold each on Fairlina. Profit right now is only a modest 650 gold per hour, but prices are set to keep rising over time. My current favorite spot is in Lake Indule in Dragonblight, where you can also fish up pygmy sucker fish for potions as well. Speaking of potions, potions of speed and wild magic are great to craft and invest in now. That's because launch week will be an absolute frenzy of activity. I'm also back to enjoying pygmy oil crafting, which is an underrated way to profit from alchemy. You get 1.5 pygmy oils per pygmy sucker fish, so just do the math on prices and you can make a few hundred or even a few thousand gold in profit per day. Moving into my third favorite forgotten gold maker, one of the most unknown ICC farms is the Scourgebane Consumable Farming in the Ghostlands. To recap, the Scourgebane Consumables are the Draft which provides 30 attack power and the Infusion which provides 15 spell power. For serious Horde progression guilds, these consumables will be mandatory since the extra damage is very relevant on fights like Blood Queen. The best part is that you need 10 Rotting Hearts or 10 Spinal Dust for each consume. That means the demand will always outstrip the supply. Whenever I have some free time, I always love to head down to Tranquiline in the Ghostlands. There you can pick up the Rotting Hearts and the Spinal Dust quest from Magistrix Aminel. My favorite spot to farm the Scourgebane items is in the southwest, and since it's a hyperspawn, I've been making over 1200 gold per hour. If you'd forgotten about the Scourgebane consumes, make sure to subscribe. I've got more secret consumables you'll definitely want to know about in Phase 4 coming in future videos. Another easy to overlook new Phase 4 gold making method I'll definitely be taking advantage of is blasting Gamma Dungeons via RDF. I plan to spam Titan Rune Gamma Dungeons via RDF all day and night during launch month. Just for queuing RDF, you'll get a daily bonus reward of 49 gold and two emblems of triumph for your first random daily. Also, you'll be getting triumph emblems from every single boss, which means you can downgrade into free epic gems. The real draw, though, is the Defiler Scourge Downs. Every Gamma boss drops a Defiler Scourge Down, which can be traded at the new vendor for Alduar and TOC gear like the Dual Blade Butcher or the Flare of the Heavens. I'll be skipping the new gear, though, and focusing on the gold-making aspect, which is the Primordial Serenite. Just 12 Defiler Scourge Stones can be traded for one Primordial Serenite. Primordial Serenite should be a great gold maker early on, because crafters need Primordial Serenite for each vendor recipe. They also need Primordial Serenite to craft the 264 items themselves as well. And of course, you also need 25 Primordial Serenite for the Shadowmorn questline. Even if everybody can't get the Shadowmorn, getting the 264 item level Shadow's Edge will still be really desirable. I personally expect Primordial Serenite to be over 2,000 gold each the first week. If you can generate about 8 Defiler Scourge Stones per hour, that means the first week of RDF spam will be at least 1,500 gold per hour. Okay, so let's get into my new unexpected favorite Phase 4 gold maker, which will be forming groups for ICC Trash Farm. Everybody will want exalted with the Ashen Verdict as quickly as possible for the 277 item level rings. The best way to get that reputation will be with ICC Trash Farms. 
According to old data and my friend King A, it'll take between 42 to 45 runs to go from neutral to exalted with the optimal trash farming method. The main method is really simple. You just smash the first packs of mobs before the first boss with a group of 25 people. Then if you get any BOE items, you can auction them off to the raid and pocket an extra cut. Each BOE that drops during your trash run should sell for a minimum of 10,000 gold early on, especially if you invite some buyers to your group. That means even with an unlucky 2 BOEs per hour, you'll be pocketing well over 1,000 gold per hour non-stop and likely closer to 2,000. If you want to learn about the insane items you can spend your newfound wealth on, definitely check out my top 10 most expensive items in Phase 4 video next.